the robots are definitely coming. 2024 is definitely going to be the year of the AI robot. And the demonstration I'm about to show you in real time is an example of what happens when you put in a super powerful chat model like OpenAI into a really sophisticated humanoid robot. And I think you'll be blown away. This is Figure 01 from Figure AI. And they've been heavily invested in by, of all people, Microsoft, OpenAI, Jeff Bezos, you name it. A lot of money is going into this company to produce humanoid general purpose robots. So this is Figure 01. We've seen it before. It's five foot six in height. Fortunately, not too overbearing. 20 kilogram payload it can pick up, weighs 60 kilograms in weight and has a runtime of five hours. Got to sort out them batteries and a speed response of 1.2 milliseconds. And Figure recently released a video that really demonstrates the combination of open AI, a large language model with effectively a large action model, which I'll come to in more detail, to give us an example in real time of where we're at with general purpose robots. Many experts in AGI often say we won't have real AGI until that AI can operate in the physical world. And this is what we're beginning to see with things like Figure. They're not the only one, of course. There's the Tesla bot Optimus. There's the robot Phoenix from Sanctuary and all the robotic works that Google and DeepMind are doing as well. But this demonstration I'm about to show you, I think is perhaps the most clear demonstration of what happens when you have a powerful large language model with a sophisticated and powerful action oriented humanoid robot. So as I said, this was released uh, last week in March. This is the latest version and it's powered by OpenAI, as we said, and it can respond with natural language. Hey, one. What do you see right now? It's using some latest speech generation as well. Really good voice I here. I really apple, like the voice. A plate in the center of the table, a drying rack with cups and a plate and you standing nearby with your hand on the table. Great. Can I have something to eat? OpenAI have their own voice AI, which is Whisper, that they've sure heavily thing. invested in. So I'm assuming that they're using that. Great. Can you explain why you did what you just did while you pick up this trash? On it. So I gave you the apple because it's the only uh, edible item I could provide you with from the table. But here you can really see demonstrated how the robot is using what we Great. know we so can do with things like OpenAI right and Where Google Gemini and Claude and stuff next. in terms of image recognition and image description. The dishes on the table, like that plate and cup, are likely to go into the drying rack next. Great. Can you put them there? So it recognizes you know, the apple, it recognizes the trash, it explains itself here, it recognizes the plate, and then it makes an assumption based on that visual data that it's got using its large language model, what it needs to do. All right, so how do you think you did? I, I think I did pretty well. The apple found its new owner, the trash is gone, and the tableware is right where it belongs. I agree. Thanks, figure one. You're welcome. If there's anything else you need help with, just let me know. So as you can see, overall, it's pretty impressive. I mean, the thing, you know, is fully learned. It learns fast. It has dexterous manipulation as it states. As I was saying earlier, this film, this video is filmed in one time so it's not speeded up so yeah there's a lag and a delay as it processes the natural language response and stuff but it's fully learned it has fast manipulation and all of that none of this is pre-programmed in that conventional sense that we've seen sure we've seen the amazing boston dynamics robots 
full of movement and stability and things like that. And they're super, super impressive. But a lot of that is pre-programmed or certainly, you know, structured in. The real thing with a general purpose robot, an all general purpose robot, is for it to be able to react in a real world scenario and adapt so that you can say, hey, Optimus or hey, figure zero one or hey, Phoenix, could you go behind the till and serve the customers? And it knows how to do that. Now, I mentioned that because Sanctuary are already doing that to a certain degree with their robot in up in uh, Vancouver in Canada. And we've certainly seen robots like Amazon already employing robots in their warehouses to do sort of fairly day to day stuff. But a lot of that is fairly structured. It's the same stuff that it's repeating. So it's not being asked to suddenly, oh, go and clean the toilets or, you know, could you sweep the floors? It's not necessarily what we call a general purpose robot. Let's break this down. Let's be honest. What we're talking about here is a robot butler. Sure, we've seen demonstrations of figure zero one making a cup of coffee. That's great. Where do I get one? Where do I sign up, take my money already? I'd love it if I could have a figure zero one robot making me beautiful cappuccinos in the morning. But of course, a lot of basic movements here, it's already in place. The cup is being handed to it. Yes, it has to adjust the coffee pod and all of that, but it's not quite as amazing as you might think. What would be really amazing is if you can tell it to do that and then tell it to do something else. What this demonstration with the apple and everything really goes to show is the robot understanding the commands, responding at what it sees, making a decision based on what it sees, and then responding in kind with action. So what you've got at work here is a large language model, like we've seen, an image model, like we've already seen. But the next thing is an action model, a large action model. That is in the same way with OpenAI and ChatGPT and GPT models, they have to be trained on loads and loads and loads and loads of data in order to be a sort of a chat GPT, a language model, a large language model. I mean, it's in the title, large language model. You need a lot of language in there. It needs to be trained so it knows what the next word in the sentence it thinks might be appropriate. That's basically how it works. It's sort of guessing what the next word should be. I mean, it's amazing and it feels like magic, but ultimately that's what a large language model is doing. It's predicting what the next word might be in the sentence that it's writing based on the request or input that you've put in. So we've seen this demonstrated, you know, already loads and loads of times. And 2023 was certainly the year of the large language model. Now what we're seeing is companies trying to race to get what we call a large action model. And that can be achieved in a number of ways. You can train the robot in the real world. We've seen it with sort of Google soccer robots, where they learn to play soccer together just by trial and error over thousands and thousands of attempts. We've seen robots be trained virtually. So in a 3D model, it's learned how to be dexterous and, you know, flick a pen around with its hands based on millions and millions and millions of examples run through a sort of a virtual machine. We've seen Tesla's Optimus folding shirts, all very impressive, but just off screen, you can see the teleoperator, i.e., yes, it looks impressive, but it's not autonomous here. It is merely being controlled remotely by, you know, virtual gloves or someone, someone with a sort of a, a virtual control, whether they're the, via gloves or stuff, and they're folding a shirt and the robot is emulating that and repeating those actions. And that's not to dismiss that because what it's doing is learning uh, through dexterity. And this is something that Sanctuary with their Phoenix robot do a lot of. You know, their robot, I've seen make a turkey sandwich and things like that. And what it's doing is learning actions. And this is how you develop a large action model in the same way that we have large language models. So it knows, it can predict what the next action 
yeah, the next movement it needs to make based on the input that it's had in the same way a large language model makes a prediction of what the next word should be. But in order to be really capable as a large action model, it needs tons and tons of action training in the same way a large language model has loads and loads of words. You need loads and loads of actions. And you can do that through computer simulations, or you can do it through the real world interaction using a tele-operated system like the Tesla model I showed you there, and like Santry and Phoenix have been training theirs to develop their own robot action AI. That's what Santry is trying to do, is trying to develop their own operating system, their own large action model, in order for these robots to be real general purpose robots. So you get the robot and it can do whatever job it is that you ask it to do. So it's not a master of one, it is a jack of all trades, as it were. And we're seeing lots and lots of development in this world with Google and their robot that's sorting out their recycling at the Google offices. And it's basically learning and it's getting like really high percentages, a plus 80 percent accuracy in terms of sorting out the recycling and things like that. And it's constantly learning as it goes and building out this large action model. And I think it's very, very exciting. And yeah, there is a lag between the request asked by the operator here and then the robot responding. But, you know, we only know that compute speeds are going to increase exponentially. And if you want a fast robot, check out this Chinese robot. If that doesn't scare you, I don't know what will. But anyway, there's massive competition in this race to achieve this dream of the robot butler or the general purpose robot and mass produce them. As Elon Musk has said, you know, he expects them to be as plentiful as cars, like many, many millions. You know, every household will have one in the same way that nearly every household has a car or even two cars. Imagine that. That's the scale. That's the scale of where we might be in a few years time. How long this will take, I don't know, but we have seen massive leaps in large language models. Could we see the same leaps in large action models and that dream of a robot butler coming ever closer to us in the real world? Anyway, I hope you found that useful. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, then please hit the likes because I like it, YouTube likes it, Figure01 likes it, this robot likes it, and it helps people like you find content like this. And if you're new to my channel, do me the great honor, please hit that subscribe button, toggle that notification bell, and that way you'll know when I post videos just like this. Talking of videos just like this, why don't you check out these videos here? If you love AI, you might like these videos. Thanks for watching.